You come to me for wisdom. Your trust is not misplaced. So, like it, subscribe to it, and let's get this writer's reaction. Everyone and their grandma has got the reviews for Godzilla Minus One out by now, but I'm not here just to recap the plot, state the themes, and give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Heck, if you know me, you know I love this movie. Why in 2023 did a crowd-pleasing yet thematically holistic blockbuster get great reviews from critics and plebs alike? It all comes down to honesty. Minus One is a Godzilla movie for Japanese audiences, much like Shin Gojira before it. But it stands above Shin in my estimation because it brings a story with heart, where Shin leaned heavily and intentionally into the political commentary on a bureaucracy unable to deal with the walking disaster of Gojira's scope. There's a bit of politics in here too, touching on the wartime tactic of compelled self-deletion via explosions, but even this is tied into the story of the human spirit. Everything about this movie assumes the viewer is familiar with Japanese culture, especially during the period it's set in, the aftermath of World War II. The country and its people are defeated, their cities crushed, filled with the shame of defeat and no small amount of survivor's guilt. But they don't take this sitting down. They roll up their sleeves and begin to rebuild, generally willing to do their part to re-establish society. It's a nationalistic message, one that could have easily been twisted into smarmy propaganda. The honesty of the film is its saving grace. We're not seeing and hearing, Japan must come together against this threat because we're the best and everyone else sucks. The image portrayed is on the other end of the human spectrum. We must come together against this threat because we survived once and we are meant to live again. Caught between a devastating war and a civilization ending monster, the only answer is to band together and do something. Think, work, and try even if you aren't sure that your plans will pan out. And when the best laid plans do fail, well, it's personal sacrifice, bravery, and most of all love that save the day. That same vein of honesty is what makes Minus One palatable to Western audiences, even viewers who weren't already longtime Gojira fans. The film knows it's here for spectacle, and everything from the stylized costumes, the treatment of color, the awesome naval models, and the detailed sets, to Godzilla and his iconic atomic breath itself reflects that. No surprise considering the director is a VFX artist himself. But the film also knows that the human story continues to be the weakest part of any and all Godzilla films to date. This is dealt with handily in Minus One, with emotional performances of a very tidy script. So tidy, in fact, you can almost see some Western script sensibilities peeking through. Those with experience dissecting story structure will surely see a few things coming in the plot, such as Shikishima's plan to make good on his previous dereliction of duty, or what I thought of as the tugboat cavalry charge. But because of the earnestness of the human story, and the joy, thrill, and horror of seeing great Godzilla action in between, even for those with the writer's sight, every scene is enjoyable. There are tried and true elements here that can even take an overly analytical writer on a roller coaster ride and put his brain in the back seat. One of those is the insanely intense visual reinterpretation of Godzilla's atomic breath. This isn't a throwaway blue beam he can fire every three seconds to set a skyscraper model on fire or throw up some sparks or a thin plasma beam that cuts through everything neatly like butter. This Godzilla's breath is a firestorm of destruction that causes its own nuclear detonation at the beam's impact point, complete with an expanding and contracting shockwave. Paired with visceral sound design and a close-up look at what the storm of breath does to the city and the human ants within, the redesign leaves you in awe. The second element I'll mention here is the score. It can sit in the background easily enough, subtly manipulating your feelings through hugely long sustains, dense noise scapes, and lush extended harmonies. But for those interested in movie scores or a somewhat aggressive form of ambient orchestral music, it holds an extra level of appeal. You'd be hard-pressed to do much better for a score that deftly supports our human character's emotional highs and lows, but still calls back to Godzilla's most iconic themes. As a writer, I give Minus One an A plus for effectiveness. For originality, I'll deduct a few points due to the Godzilla destruction plan of choice and the usage of the aforementioned cavalry charge. I don't rail against these scenes in particular, they just pricked at my awareness a bit too much to ignore. Score that a, um, minus? And for presentation, especially knowing this was made for a fraction of the budget of recent Western films, that's gonna be another A plus for me. I'll be picking this up on disc as soon as it's available and sharing it with my sons as soon as we can talk about some of the heavier emotional elements. That's my quick writer's take on Godzilla Minus One. You got thoughts? Share them below. I want to know what you think. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to catch me next time, and of course... Yeah!